keeping our countries safe, keeping our regions, continents safe, keeping our world safe, secure, stable, so we can focus on the developmental ticket. And we're very pleased to indicate that um, we as brotherly countries, sisterly countries, take your pick, whether you are si we, we are sisters or brothers, we are everything, we would enhance our cooperation in that area. And it's a necessary ingredient, colleagues, to achieve our objectives at the economic social level. That, to many people I say, we take for granted that we can have a press briefing here in an environment of peace. We take that for granted. It is not true that this peace is there because it's there. It is there because people have worked to make it peaceful. And so we would like to share, again, the experiences around there to grow this stability for progress, if I may say that, stability for progress. It is indeed disheartening to witness a caned Hichilema, the president of Zambia, addressing peace and stability in Kigali while neglecting to acknowledge the concerning actions of President Kagame and the Rwandan Defense Forces, RDF, in their aggression against their neighboring country, the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. While President Hichilema's emphasis on peace and stability is commendable, addressing the ongoing conflict and its implications for regional harmony is essential. The situation in the DRC has been marred by reports of RDF incursions and attacks, leading to widespread humanitarian crises, displacement of innocent civilians, and the exploitation of the DRC's valuable natural resources. President Hichilema's silence on the matter raises questions about his commitment to promoting peace in the region. To effectively address peace and stability, leaders must handle all aspects of conflict and ensure accountability for any actions that undermine regional harmony. The attacks by the RDF in the DRC have grave consequences for the Congolese people and the stability of the entire region. The aggression undermines diplomatic efforts, strains relationships between neighboring countries, and perpetuates a cycle of violence that hampers social and economic development. President Hichilema's visit to Kigali presented an opportunity to engage in open dialogue and address these concerns directly with President Kagame. By raising the issue and expressing his concerns about the attacks on the DRC, President Hichilema could have demonstrated a commitment to genuine peace and stability in the region. It is essential to recognize that sustainable peace cannot be achieved through selective silence or ignoring injustices committed by any party involved. The path to lasting peace requires acknowledging and addressing the grievances, concerns, and actions of all parties involved in the conflict. Furthermore, a true advocate for peace should also prioritize holding accountable those responsible for violations of international law or acts of aggression. By doing so, leaders can contribute to a culture of accountability, justice, and reconciliation, which are fundamental pillars for fostering lasting peace and stability in the region. In conclusion, it is regrettable that President Hichilema failed to address the actions of President Kagame and the RDF in their attacks on the Democratic Republic of Congo during his visit to Kigali. To promote genuine peace and stability, Leaders must address all aspects of conflict and work towards accountability and justice. By doing so, they can foster an environment conducive to sustainable development, harmonious relations, and lasting peace in the region. Warning to Zambia's President Hakane Hichilema, beware of Kogame's deceptive tactics. The recent press conference featuring Hakane Hichilema, the newly elected President of Zambia, and Rwandan President Paul Kagame, has sparked concern regarding Kogame's behavior and personality. This article aims to shed light on the alleged traits of President Kagame, emphasizing his tendency to manipulate, prioritize self-interest, disregard the truth, employ forceful solutions, and strain relationships with neighboring countries. 
By examining the situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, and Kogame's reputation as a dictator in countries like Burundi, Uganda, and Kenya, it becomes apparent that caution is warranted in dealing with Rwanda. Instead, Zambia should focus on fostering peace and development with its neighbors, especially the DRC, which possesses significant economic potential. The following sections will explore the examples and advice outlined in the paragraph. Kogame's lying and manipulative nature. One primary concern about President Kagame is his propensity for dishonesty. Accusations of lying are often associated with his political strategies, where he is known to manipulate situations to suit his interests. By distorting facts and spreading misinformation, Kagame aims to control narratives and maintain his grip on power. This pattern of deception raises severe doubts about his credibility and trustworthiness, making it essential for leaders like President Hichilema to approach interactions cautiously. Self-interest over common good. Another troubling aspect of Kogame's leadership style is his consistent prioritization of self-interest above the welfare of his people or regional stability. While every leader pursues their country's interests, Kogame's actions often come at the expense of neighboring nations and regional partnerships. This self-centered approach must respect the principles of cooperation and collaboration necessary for sustainable development and harmonious relations among African countries. Resistance to truth and problem-solving through force. Kogame's aversion to hearing the truth and his inclination towards employing forceful measures to resolve issues exacerbate concerns about his leadership. Instead of engaging in open dialogue and considering alternative perspectives, Kagame has shown a penchant for silencing dissent and resorting to aggression. This approach not only stifles democratic principles but also hampers the potential for peaceful resolutions to conflicts. Such behavior raises doubts about Kogame's commitment to diplomacy and compromises, further complicating relationships with neighboring nations. The situation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The example of Kogame's involvement in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, serves as a cautionary tale. Initially, Kagame maintained friendly ties with former DRC President Felix Shisekedi. However, recent developments indicate a significant shift in Kogame's stance. Reports suggest that Kogame's actions in the DRC have been marked by interference, exploiting the country's resources, and undermining its sovereignty. This behavior has drawn international criticism, and further highlights Kogame's willingness to prioritize personal gain over regional stability. Dictatorial reputation and strained relationships. President Kogame's reputation as a dictator is not limited to Rwanda alone. Neighboring countries like Burundi, Uganda, Kenya, and numerous international entities have voiced concerns about his autocratic rule. This reputation has strained diplomatic ties and hindered cooperation in the region. For Zambia, a nation that values peace and stability, it is crucial to consider the potential consequences of engaging with a leader widely regarded as undemocratic. Promoting peace and development with neighbors. Given the above-mentioned concerns regarding President Kogame's behavior and actions, it is prudent for Zambia, under President Hichilema's leadership, to prioritize peace and development with its neighbors, particularly the Democratic Republic of Congo. The DRC is rich in natural resources and possesses immense economic potential. Zambia can benefit from mutually beneficial trade partnerships, regional stability, and sustainable development by fostering solid ties and cooperation with the DRC. The cautionary warning presented in this article emphasizes the need for President Hichilema of Zambia to approach dealings with President Kagame of Rwanda with vigilance. Kogane's alleged tendencies towards lying, manipulation, self-interest, forceful problem-solving, strained relationships, and dictator-like behavior raise valid concerns about his intentions and actions. Instead of prioritizing relations with Rwanda, Zambia would be better served by promoting peace and development with neighboring countries such as the Democratic Republic of Congo. By doing so, 
Zambia can focus on fostering regional stability, harnessing economic opportunities, and ensuring a prosperous future for its citizens. Mr. President, thank you very much um, for um, receiving us well here in Kigali, Rwanda. Since we arrived, hospitality has been very good. But uh, on a more substantive matter, to just echo your words, Mr. President, that um, the two countries have had a long relationship, um, many years of working together in different um, areas. And um, we are very delighted that um, today we are here to further that relationship, to grow that uh, partnership, the people of Rwanda, the people of Zambia, who we work for, um, can see benefits, tangible benefits of this relationship, Mr. President. And that's only possible if we are able to cooperate in a number of areas, economic, um, trade, investment, agriculture, given our pool of resources, pool of uh, talent, capabilities, when we work together, we will be able to deliver benefits for the people of Rwanda and the people of Zambia and beyond uh, the citizens of the two countries in our regions and our continent and in the world. We know that, for example, the global food basket is not full. The global food situation is deteriorating. One hand, we have a growing population. On another, we are not scaling up production of food to feed our people. So these relationships, our conversations around agriculture, supporting each other, investing together, who contribute towards that food basket for Rwanda, for Zambia, for the region, continent, and the world. Given Africa's resource endowment, natural resource endowments, I like singing this song, Mr. President. We should not be having any African going to bed without food. It's unacceptable. And so it goes for technological areas, Mr. President. We have discussed at length. We had our meeting in Zimbabwe in Victoria Force not long ago, uh, where we discussed the importance of accelerating uh, technological advancements, digital issues, so that we can improve the flow of trade, movement of goods and services between our countries. And we criticized ourselves that time that we are proudly talking about one-stop border posts. Actually, we should have non-stop border posts mm -hmm. because technology allows us to do that, so to speed up what we do together. Um, we also have, for the media, for the public, been working together. And we want to enhance that part, as the President said, of keeping our country safe keeping our regions, continents safe, keeping our world safe, secure, stable, so we can focus on the developmental ticket. And we're very pleased to indicate that um, we as brotherly countries, sisterly countries, take your pick, whether you are si we, we're sisters or brothers, we are everything would enhance our cooperation in that area. And it's a necessary ingredient, colleagues, to achieve our objectives at the economic social level. That, to many people I say, we take for granted that we can have a press briefing here in an environment of peace. We take that for granted. It is not true that 
this peace is there because it's there. It is there because people have worked to make it peaceful. And so we would like to share again the experiences around there to grow this stability for progress, if I may say that, stability for progress. Mr. President, my team in our small meeting there, I do know my ministers. I was checking their body language. I think they are happy to be here. <laughs> and uh, um, we want to encourage them to deepen their relationships with their counterparts. They don't have to wait for us to have to meet like this. They have to be working together as routine, as mundane, mm -hmm. as we address the concerns, genuine concerns of the youthful population that we have in our countries, two countries, and on our continent particularly. Africa has a profile of a younger age population, and it means us working harder uh, to meet their expectations, to offer them opportunities in many areas, including self-employment. Including self-employment, yes, formal employment, but self-employment. I think these are the issues we've been discussing. I must say, Mr. President, since I took office 21 months ago, you are one of the presidents we have interacted quite often, meeting in different platforms, chatting, same hymn sheet, and I'm very grateful that um, we are here today formally to have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Your Excellencies. Uh, we will now begin by taking brief questions from the media, and we'd like to start with our guest. I'd like to